Are you looking to find out your Myers-Briggs personality type and receive personalized feedback on how you can improve your communication and conflict management skills, deal with change, and make decisions? If so, then you're in the right place. My name is Leon, this is Body Mind 360 and in this video I will explain to you everything that comes with my in-depth personality type assessment and feedback package. I will also review with you a sample of the report that you will receive with your purchase. If this is your first time watching and you like my content, then make sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification icon to be alerted of new videos. Now let's get started. I created the in-depth personality type assessment and feedback package for those that want to obtain clarity about their personality type and to receive practical feedback that helps them better themselves. With your purchase, you will gain online access to completing the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator Step 2 Assessment. This advanced Myers-Briggs Assessment will provide me with the data needed to provide you with the most advanced personality-based feedback. You receive a PDF of the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator Step 2 Interpretive Report that includes specific feedback on relating your results to communication, conflict management, dealing with change, and making decisions. You can download a sample PDF of this report in the description below. With your purchase, you will also receive a 45-minute video consultation with me where I will verify your Myers-Briggs personality type results and review your report with you. I can also accommodate phone consultations upon request. If you would like to learn more about me and my background, you can watch my channel introduction video linked in the description below. Now for the next part of this video, I will go ahead and review the PDF that you will receive with your purchase. As noted earlier, you can find a download link to a sample report in the description below. Okay, so we're going to begin by taking a look at the Myers-Briggs Type Indicator Step 2 Interpret Report. If you open up your sample or just follow along on the screen, um, this very first page here um, is just going to be your cover page. So right now it's uh, Mr. Sample that we're working with, Mark Sample. Um, going out to page 2, this is going to get you a, a bit of an introduction to the Step 2. Uh, a quick review of the main um, polar opposites when it comes to extroversion, introversion, sensing, intuition, thinking, feeling, judging, and perceiving. This is the same as it is with the step one instrument. But again, a nice little introduction and refresher. On page three is where you're going to actually see the meat and potato of your initial step one results. And when we say step one, it just basically means your four letter type. In this case, this individual was an ESTJ. Uh, the most important data here is at the bottom of this report where you're gonna see the probability index for each of your MBTI preferences. These scores, depending on how far away they are from center and how close they are to each extremity, um, is gonna give us information on how confident we are in your results. So this individual, um, we have pretty good confidence that they are an ESTJ, especially their extroversion probability index and sensing probability index is really, really high. And also uh, thinking and judging also quite inconsistent. Now from my experience, it's very common to see results drop into that somewhat likely, the light green territory. Um, and when that happens, it pretty much prompts me to push for a secondary conversation during our consultation where we're going to see if uh, anything was potentially misassessed. What's nice about the step two though that we'll see in a moment is we're going to have the benefit of facets uh, that will help us clarify why potentially the overall probability index was lower, which again, there's nothing wrong with it, but uh, lower probability index scores closer to 50 
are going to lower our confidence in the initial results. Now, page four is going to introduce you to the facets. And you can basically think of these as subcategories that go under the four main dichotomies. So there's five per extroversion and introversion. As you can kind of see here on the left-hand side, uh, extroversion tends to relate to initiating expressiveness, being gregarious, active, and enthusiastic, while introverts tend to be more on the receiving, uh, contained, intimate, reflective, and quiet side. So you'll get a little introduction to all this. And of course, through our conversation, I'm more than happy to answer any additional questions. Uh, the next page is where you're going to get the actual data for the facets. Um, each page is going to focus on one of the dichotomies. So here you have your actual scoring for extroversion and introversion. Um, whichever one you assess that is highlighted kind of in dark blue here. But also you have your specific scores. Now the scoring here is a little unique because unlike step one results, where you're either on one side of the fence or another, you're you know, either assessed as extrovert or introverted. Here you can score in preference, which means for an extrovert, it would be in preference to be expressive, as you see this individual, um, or out of preference. So you can have an extrovert that, for example, is contained, which can happen for specific adaptive reasons, but it's not traditional. But unlike step one, you can also score in a mid zone. And that's what you see here in gregarious and intimate. Uh, and a mid zone, this is not a natural state. Based on MBTI theory, you are not born in the mid zone. Uh, it is definitely related to adaptive elements of your lifestyle. So it could be that maybe at work, you have to be more gregarious. Uh, let's just say if you're an introvert, um, but you're naturally more focused on that intimate um, connection and maybe in your personal life you lean towards that and then when you need to be more gregarious at work you kind of hit that switch and this is how it may come up for example uh, the feedback uh, is also unique which I really like so you'll notice um, below the actual scores you're gonna say you know ways to connect with others this has to do with initiating receiving and then noted that you know you scored in the mid zone and the feedback directly to the right of it is related to you scoring in the mid zone. Just like in the other ones, it will tell you, hey, you're expressive in preference, or if you're out of preference, which this individual is not, it would give you specific feedback. So really good information uh, that goes a step further than that basic step one results. It's also one of the reasons why I'm such a big fan of promoting the step two report as opposed to the more basic step one reports. Uh, as you go on, page six, the next page is going to have the same format, but now sensing and intuition. Similar rules apply. Page seven, uh, same thing, but now notice this individual, they are assessed as a T, but they have uh, two areas that are out of preference. So we would consider this person a tender and accepting thinking-based individual, which again, statistically is very unlikely because, not unlikely, but it's less usual as a traditional thinking-based individual is much more likely to be more critical uh, and tough. So um, there's nothing wrong with these results, but it kind of helps differentiate us. This thinking individual uh, versus maybe somebody else um, that uh, didn't really develop that accepting and tender side. Uh, on page eight, again, similar data for judging and perceiving. Um, once you get to page nine, you are going to now get specific feedback on some of the content sections we discussed or mentioned earlier. And that's uh, applying step two results to communication in this case. So it's going to look at your facet results and it's going to give you feedback on your specific communication style. But also what I really like is tips for enhancing your style. So there's always a polarity to this feedback. So if you're, for example, really expressive, well, there's going to be situations where you may not have the same strength. So uh, it's natural, for example, for you to say what is in your mind to those present. But recognizing when it's important not to say what's on your mind uh, and then don't say it, that's something that, you know, an expressive extrovert may sometimes struggle with and they can get in trouble with it. So, um, again, some really good practical tips on that. Page 10 is going to apply your results to managing conflict. Same idea here. Yeah, we're going to have natural innate strengths. And then there are things that are going to be able to do to 
improve on our weaknesses. Now, some individuals may read this and say, hey, I already do that, which is great because the idea is that throughout your life, you're going to want to work on becoming more uh, flexible, more adaptable, and draw strength from your place as a weakness. Uh, not everybody's at the same place at the same time. So for some people, this is th these are things that they really need to work on. For others, it's already past your checklist and like, hey, I can do really well uh, in my natural state, but I'm also, I got it covered when I'm out of preference. And again, that would be the ultimate goal. Page 11 is going to apply results to dealing with change, uh, something a lot of people struggle with. So again, it talks about your change management style based on specific facet results. And then also tips on enhancing your style again, so make up for some of those natural weaknesses that innately occur. Uh, page 12 is applying your results to making decisions. And it's going to talk about um, your decision-making style. Um, again, I'll discuss this more during one-on-one -on -one consultations, but um, again, depending on the two middle letters, so either sensing or intuition and thinking and feeling, what combination you have there is going to provide a unique kind of perspective on making decisions, how we process that information, internalize it, and then make decisions based off that processing. And here what's great is going to actually identify, so this person is logical and reasonable. I'm going to give you unique tips for that combination, um, uh, feedback, and then additional tips below. Page 13 is going to go a little deeper and it's gonna kind of go into the territory of talking about type dynamics. For a lot of people, this may be a little bit more advanced um, and maybe TMI, uh, but here it's gonna, again, give you the order of your prioritizing. So an ESTJ, uh, their most favorite process is utilizing thinking first. Then their second uh, dairy uh, process is utilizing sensing internally, followed by intuition, and then their least preferred method is feeling, which makes sense. ESTJs, you know, connecting on the feeling side, um, developing their ability to being sympathetic and empathetic sometimes is a bit of a struggle. Um, and again, um, especially when dealing with people they don't know too well. Um, so this is one of those things that will kind of give you a visualization of those preferences. Um, optimally, we would work on those weaknesses and uh, develop them into kind of minor strengths, but it is something that everybody will go on their own pace and doing. Uh, page 14, um, it's going to give you more feedback on utilizing your type effectively um, across the board and talking more about the facets, so great little extra tips. Um, and then 15, it's going to talk about kind of bringing things together. As I mentioned earlier in this video, when you go out of preference, it's going to identify you as a slightly different version of the base type. So this person, person is an ESTJ, but they were out of preference when it comes to being more accepting and more tender focused than the average ESTJ. So quite literally, um, this individual would be an accepting and tender ESTJ. And that's kind of how it's notated here. Um, these last two informational pages are going to start with an overview of your results. This is just a nice little reference sheet where it's going to show you all your scores for your facets and all your preferences uh, in one space. And then the page that I get the most questions about is this page where we talk about interpreter summary based on reported type. This in a nutshell is really meant for us as certified interpreters. We don't expect you to understand this, but this is kind of the scientific data behind your results. So what you're seeing here is these little numbers is where you actually scored on these scales. Okay, You're going to see this green territory and a blue line. So the bl do blue line basically um, represents the average score uh, on the global samplings for ESTJs. So if you were to take all the samplings that they have and combine them, you're going to see that the average ESTJ scores here on uh, towards initiating. The green to the left and right represent one standard deviation. So when your score falls near that, on that little blue line or within that range, that's within a normal range. It's what we expect. 
So here you kind of see that for extroversion, it's all, you know, it's on polarizing sides of the averages, but it's still within that range. And a couple of the areas, best example here is thinking, um, they fall out of that range. So even though, for example, it's not uncommon for an ESTJ to score right in the mid zone for critical or maybe slightly like a one towards uh, accepting, this individual scored a two. So it's outside of that norm and outside of that standard deviation. So it's something that flags myself as a professional say, hey, let's discuss this. Uh, even bigger example is that tough versus tender. They scored a four. This is really out of the norm because you can see the average scores barely fall out of the mid range. So it's very, uh, it's quite uncommon statistically to score so far towards the tender. Uh, and again, a uh, good push for further discussion on it. Um, so that's what this really represents. Um, you're also going to have a polarity index. And really, this is measuring consistency. This is not a thing where you need to get 100, like this, oh, wow, 0 to 100 rating, and you scored a 59. That's not like a failing score or anything like that. Uh, but basically, uh, as noted in the notes here, most individuals will score somewhere between 50 and 65. It just tells us that you're being consistent with your answers. If somebody's randomly answering questions, uh, this will pick up on that. You know, sometimes when people are trying to force something or they're confused, um, this will point that out to us as well. So again, higher is fine, but uh, as long as the score doesn't get too low, it's not as big of a concern. And finally, number of emitted responses. Now, you do want to make sure when you take this assessment, whenever possible, complete all of the assessment. Take your time. There's technically no time limit. There are no right or wrong answers. You don't want to be stressed out when you take this assessment. Take it when you have lots of time, when you're in kind of a good mental state, because if you're upset or angry, um, you're much more likely to respond uh, differently than if you're in a calm state. So that's the report. Uh, I hope this helps you out in giving you initial understanding of what you'd be receiving. And again, we'll be discussing this in further detail during your call. I hope that this video has given you a good understanding of the consultation process that I provide with my in-depth personality type assessment and feedback package. If you are enjoying my content, then please remember to like, subscribe, and hit the notification button to be updated when new videos drop. And for watching until the end, you can enter discount code INDEPTHP2020 at checkout for $10 off your purchase. See you next time on your journey to a healthier body and mind.